So this is just a quick update on the NES RGB install. I left out one step, which is to remove these three capacitors. Uh, the reason is just that the Super Nintendo cable I was intending on using is already going to have those built into it, so there is no reason for us to have that duplicated on the mod board. So just take your soldering iron, and as you can see here, uh, I'm just heating up the solder that's holding them in and kind of gently working the capacitor up. Um, going back and forth from one side to the other. You want to be very careful that you don't remove or accidentally pull up the uh, pads, the solder pads on the board because we do need those. Um, we're going to basically, once we get these up, be uh, bridging between the two pads. So just work your way slowly, carefully, uh, back and forth on those until you get them out. And then once you've done that, um, just take your soldering iron and load these things down with solder until you can get the connection bridged. It took me a fair amount of solder to actually get these going, uh, as you can see here. But um, once you've done that, you'll have these connections bridged. So we've basically removed those capacitors from the circuit and left it as just a, uh, a straight connection. That way we can rely on a standard Super Nintendo SCART cable, RGB SCART cable, to provide those instead of having to get a custom uh, cable that doesn't have any of those capacitors in it. So it just, it just it makes it a little bit easier for us to source uh, cables to use with this since we used the multi-out on the back there. So here we go getting the final one bridged here. And then once you're done, it should look something like this. Then you can just close it all up. Uh, or if you haven't finished the mod, you can do that now. Uh, thanks for watching.